Welcome, fellow animal enthusiasts. Get ready for an enthralling dive into the captivating world of animal reproductive biology. Leave behind those dull textbooks and prepare to witness a realm where the sex lives of animals surpass the drama of all the Kardashians combined. Brace yourselves for an extraordinary journey, where we'll explore the fascinating adaptations these creatures have developed to ignite their passions. Discover the wonders of multiple penises and vaginas, along with the intriguing phenomena such as snails wielding, love darts, and much, much, more. Join us as we unravel the spicy and diverse ways in which animals indulge in the art of love, sometimes even bidding adieu in the most unconventional manner. Get ready to be amazed and enlightened. When you see a shark the main thing you are thinking about is the number of their teeth, but sharks also typically have two penises, which are known as claspers. These specialized reproductive organs are located on the inner side of the pelvic fins in male sharks. Claspers are used during mating to transfer sperm to the female. It's worth noting that not all shark species have claspers, as reproductive organs can vary across different shark species. We all love seeing an adorable joey peeking out of its pouch while mother kangaroo hops about, but what you might not have known is that this vanilla marsupial has three vaginas. Kangaroos, like other marsupials, have a unique reproductive system compared to other mammals. The female kangaroo has two uteri and three separate vaginal canals. The two outer vaginas are used for sperm transport, while the central vagina is primarily for giving birth. This reproductive adaptation allows female kangaroos to be continuously pregnant and have embryos at different stages of development. And just in case you were wondering, most male marsupials have a multi-headed penis to match. Some people might think this is the perfect way to die but it's no joking matter for male antichinists that engage in such intense mating behavior that can lead to their own death. During the breeding season, male antichinists engage in a phenomenon known as semilparity, where they mate with multiple females over a short period of time. The mating behavior of male antichinists is highly competitive and vigorous. They engage in prolonged and intense mating sessions, often without eating or sleeping. This behavior causes extreme physiological stress on their bodies, leading to a suppression of their immune system and a rapid decline in health. Eventually, the stress and exhaustion from continuous mating result in the male's immune system being compromised, making them susceptible to infections and diseases. As a result, many male antichinists die shortly after the breeding season, which has earned them the nickname, suicidal marsupials. This mating strategy is believed to be an evolutionary adaptation to maximize their chances of passing on their genes, despite the high cost to individual males. Although the mere thought of this might send shivers of pain down the spines of the bravest man, female hyenas give birth through their pseudo-penis, which is an elongated and enlarged clitoris. The female hyena's reproductive anatomy is highly unusual among mammals. The pseudo-penis is not only used for mating but also for giving birth. It is capable of stretching and dilating to allow the passage of cubs during childbirth. It is no surprise that female hyenas often experience a high rate of pup mortality during their first birth, with estimates ranging from 10% to 60%. This unique reproductive adaptation in female hyenas is believed to be related to the complex social structure and dominance hierarchy within hyena clans. Now this might seem like it came straight out of some bizarre sea fee but indeed these flatworms, specifically those belonging to the species Macrostomum hystrix, engage in a behavior known as penis fencing. This peculiar mating behavior involves the exchange of sperm between two flatworms using their sharp and sword-like penises. During penis fencing, two flatworms face each other and extend their elongated penises. They engage in a duel-like battle, attempting to pierce the skin of their opponent with their penises and inseminate the other with their sperm. The flatworm that successfully inseminates the other becomes the father, while the inseminated flatworm becomes the mother. The reason behind this behavior is an evolutionary advantage for the flatworms. By engaging in penis fencing, they ensure that they receive the sperm from a partner while minimizing the chances of being inseminated themselves. It is a unique and fascinating reproductive strategy. While many fathers get confused with diaper changing and what weighs up on their newborn, seahorses are getting number one best dad awards every single year. In seahorses and sea dragons, it is the male that becomes pregnant and carries the developing embryos. Seahorses are one of the few animal species in which males have taken on the role of pregnancy and childbirth. 
During the mating process, the female seahorse transfers her eggs to a specialized pouch located on the male's abdomen. The male then fertilizes the eggs internally and carries them in his pouch for the duration of the gestation period, which can vary depending on the species. Inside the male's pouch, the eggs develop and receive nourishment from the surrounding fluids. The male seahorse provides a stable and protective environment for the embryos, regulating temperature and salinity to ensure their proper development. When the time comes, the male gives birth to fully formed, miniature seahorses. Although some might have penis insecurity it is definitely not the case for barnacles as they are known for having relatively large and elongated penises compared to their body size. In fact, they have one of the largest penis to body size ratios in the animal kingdom. The size of a barnacle's penis can be several times its body length, allowing it to reach and fertilize nearby females. Barnacles are sessile crustaceans that live in marine environments. They have a unique reproductive strategy where they are predominantly hermaphroditic, possessing both male and female reproductive organs. However, they cannot self-fertilize, so they still require mating with other barnacles. During reproduction, barnacles extend their long, coiled penises out of their shells to reach neighboring barnacles and transfer sperm. This process is known as sperm casting. In some cases, they will shed their penises after the first mating season and regrow it for the next one. They engage in a competitive mating behavior where they try to outcompete each other to fertilize nearby females. The one with the longer penis can reach and deposit sperm into more distant partners, increasing their chances of successful fertilization. So, while barnacles may not have the largest penises in absolute terms, their relative size in relation to their bodies is quite impressive allowing them to engage in unique and fascinating reproductive behaviors. We all know cupids are notorious for appearing suddenly during Valentine's Day to shoot people with love arrows but you would be surprised to find out that the true cupids are a certain species of snail that engage in a behavior known as love dart or gypsobelum during mating. Love darts are sharp, calcareous structures that are formed within the reproductive organs of snails. These darts are created by the male snail and are then used during mating. When two snails are ready to mate, the male snail will extend his reproductive organ, which contains the love dart, and stab the female snail with it. The purpose of this behavior is not entirely clear, but there are a few theories. One theory suggests that the love dart may serve as a mechanism to transfer mucus containing hormones or other substances that could influence the female's reproductive behavior. Another theory proposes that the love dart is a form of sperm competition. The dart may help the male by removing or displacing the sperm of previous suitors inside the female's body, increasing his chances of successful fertilization. You could shoot us with a love dart too, by hitting that like button. Chickens may appear ordinary and even a bit boring but that's because you didn't know that female chickens have a mechanism to eject or expel unwanted sperm. Female birds, including chickens, possess a reproductive structure called the cloaca. The cloaca is a common opening where both the reproductive and excretory systems meet. During mating, the male chicken transfers sperm into the female's cloaca. However, not all of the sperm may be desired or necessary for fertilization. In some cases, the female chicken can control which sperm will reach the oviduct for fertilization. Inside the female chicken's reproductive system, there are specialized tubular structures called sperm storage tubules. These tubules allow the female to store and retain sperm for an extended period of time. It is believed that the female chicken can selectively release or expel stored sperm from these tubules, thus controlling which sperm will have the opportunity to fertilize the eggs. The ability to eject unwanted sperm provides female chickens with a level of reproductive control and may influence the genetic diversity and paternity of their offspring. Now this one might raise a few eyebrows but trust us there is a perfectly reasonable explanation for male porcupines engaging in a behavior known as urine spraying as part of their mating ritual. Before mating, a male porcupine will often approach a female and urinate on her. This behavior serves several purposes in the reproductive process. Firstly, the male's urine acts as a form of scent marking, indicating his presence and signaling his reproductive readiness to the female. The scent of the male's urine contains pheromones that can convey information about his health, genetic quality, and overall suitability as a mate. Secondly, urine spraying helps to stimulate the female's reproductive behavior and readiness. 
The act of urinating on the female can trigger hormonal and physiological changes in the female's reproductive system, preparing her for mating. If you thought your ex had a problem with codependency, you clearly have yet to learn about the male anglerfish that have a unique mating behavior where they essentially merge with females. In some species of anglerfish, the males are much smaller than the females and lack a functional digestive system. When a male anglerfish finds a female, he bites onto her body and releases an enzyme that fuses their tissues together. Over time, the male's body becomes absorbed into the female's body, providing sperm for her reproductive needs. Eventually, all that remains of the male is a small pair of gonads, which continue to produce sperm for the female. This phenomenon is known as sexual parasitism and is a remarkable adaptation seen in certain deep-sea anglerfish species. While most men must wait for a paternity test to find out if the baby is theirs, male damselflies take matters into their own claspers by removing the sperm of competitors during mating. This behavior is known as sperm removal or sperm displacement. Damselflies have a unique reproductive organ called the copulatory organ or claspers that they use to transfer sperm to females during mating. In some species, males have evolved specialized structures on their copulatory organs that allow them to remove or displace the sperm of rival males from the female's reproductive tract. By doing so, the male increases his own chances of fertilizing the female's eggs. This behavior is a form of sperm competition, where males employ various strategies to maximize their reproductive success in the presence of competing sperm from other males. Our exploration of animal reproductive biology has taken us on a thrilling expedition through the extraordinary and diverse world of animal mating. We have witnessed astonishing adaptations and behaviors that defy our expectations, revealing nature's ingenuity in the pursuit of reproduction. From the astonishing diversity of genital structures to the intricate courtship rituals and unconventional mating strategies, animals have mastered the art of love in ways that leave us in awe. As we conclude this adventure, we are left with a sense of wonder and admiration for the remarkable strategies and adaptations that have evolved throughout the animal kingdom. The study of animal reproduction continues to unveil new mysteries and challenges our preconceived notions of what is possible. So, let us carry the knowledge gained from this journey and spread the fascination for the spicy and varied world of animal mating. May it ignite our curiosity and inspire us to protect and preserve the magnificent creatures that make our planet so extraordinary.